Ken Cooper, this has been a very interesting series of conversations. Um, many of the applications that we've talked about have been award-winning applications, the Edelman Awards, System Dynamics Application Awards, and we're now turning to some of your more recent work. Um, I don't think I've even seen some of this work written up, so I'm very interested in um, hearing some of the story about some of your recent work in biosimulation. Glad to. Uh, thanks, David. Uh, now, <clears throat> I have to say that unlike the, uh, the I think the, the already established benefits that system dynamics modeling has brought to many of the business cases that we've discussed, uh, that this is this domain of uh, of simulating uh, the systems and the, the the ailments of the human body uh, is is still just a very strong article of faith uh, on my part. Uh, uh, a belief that uh, really is rooted in uh, the notion that the that the systems of the human body are among the most elegantly complex of any feedback intensive systems and I've been I've been thinking this for quite some time uh, I was I was very uh, pleased to hear uh, Jay uh, last year uh, speaking at the the conference say and I'll read exactly what he said uh, that he said the and talking about new domains of application for system dynamics. He said, the, uh, the human body is among the most complex of systems. Medical dynamics is a vast new frontier that is opening up. And I guess, and I'll say this again during the, the, uh, the course of the talk, I, part of this, the reason I wanted to uh, speak about this now is, is you know, it's to make something of a call to arms uh, among uh, system dynamics practitioners to uh, to keep an eye out for opportunities uh, to uh, collaborate with medical researchers on uh, building and using system dynamics models uh, for a wide range of, of potential applications. Um, the uh, the and I'll just mention a few that. Uh, in the the experience that we've been through, uh, have uh, have really jumped out as strong candidates because of the nature of the of the conditions. Um, and and I'll note one other thing in in getting into this, and that is that uh, there is the there is I think the potential that uh, as a bigger picture item that rather than pumping the body full of chemicals uh, to deal with uh, uh, ailments uh, that perhaps we can find a way in, in, uh, in, in a good application of control systems engineering uh, to, to use the body's own control mechanisms uh, to behave a little better to perform uh, more of the work that uh, the way that we know that those systems are capable of doing and so but when you get uh, some form of misbehavior of those control systems there are a number of things of, about which we all know in some cases sadly personally uh, that uh, that result there is the the entire range of autoimmune disorders example that are nothing more well they are classic examples of the, the the malfunction of the control mechanisms of the immune system uh, multiple sclerosis type 1 diabetes rheumatoid arthritis Crohn's disease the the list of autoimmune disorders uh, just produced a, a, a typed list would go on uh, over a very densely uh, lined page. Uh, that not it possible or perhaps even likely that, uh, that some of the same mechanisms uh, 
for uh, in in the development and progression of different autoimmune disorders uh, are, are that there's some similarity across those and wouldn't it be an enormous contribution to be able to understand uh, what interventions might be effective uh, for those different disorders maybe there's some of the same interventions the the prospect of testing those potential interventions in different disorders would be decades in the making uh, it were it not for the ability uh, to at least theoretical at this point because the, all those models don't exist uh, to test uh, the uh, the interventions in uh, the progression of type 1 diabetes and, and the progression of multiple sclerosis uh, just even just stopping there would be an extraordinary contribution but it's imaginable that there are that there are commonalities that uh, uh, that may exist uh, so have you worked on specific disease progressions we have uh, the we have worked uh, quite a bit on uh, uh, one category of autoimmune disorders uh, in type 1 diabetes uh, and we know that uh, there are some of the basic dynamics that uh, that go on there uh, uh, involve this shifting balance between the uh, the, the the regulatory mechanisms uh, in the immune system uh, uh, and uh, in the attempt to activate the immune system and de deactivate it and uh, those those characteristics uh, uh, are certainly responsible for uh, some uh, perhaps many of the uh, uh, cases of, of type 1 diabetes we're not we're not at, at this moment, uh, in, in talking about that, we're not concerning ourselves with how with how does it originate, uh, whether it's environmental, genetic, whatever. But you see, in, at least uh, anecdotally, uh, instances where so many individuals who have one form of autoimmune disorder have uh, also another form, and so one has to wonder if there's not a systemic. Uh, explanation that spans have you been able to reproduce what you believe to be those disease dynamics inside the simulated in, environment yes uh, in the case of uh, type 1 diabetes only uh, but th that's where the faith comes in is the the belief that there, that uh, that there is uh, and I'm not saying that this will prove to be the case for sure but it's it's a it's a it's a compelling to me it's a compelling notion that uh, deserves investigation and certainly even if all that potential of commonality is if that isn't even true you still have the 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 big macro issue of this uh, achieving this proper balance of the control mechanisms that you know, and it's the improper balance that clearly is a uh, uh, source of autoimmune uh, disorders and it's one of the reasons why why the treatment of cancers is uh, still remains as uh, rooted in uh, uh, killing the, 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 the cancer the tumor as uh, as it has been for years uh, uh, although indeed one of the the, the hottest uh, areas of uh, of medical research in the last few years uh, in terms of oncology uh, has, has been immuno-oncology and the, the use of uh, uh, drugs to uh, remove some of the natural inhibitor functions uh, that exist, inhibitor functions that are intended to keep the, uh, the immune system in this case from over reacting uh, by alleviating some of those uh, inhibitions uh, these drugs some of which are beginning to show success uh, uh, basically are raising the bar a little bit to allow the, uh, the, the system to react a bit more strongly uh, 
but it raises all sorts of questions about well how much more strongly and if it and if it's much more strongly than that then don't you then surely you run the risk of autoimmune disorders mm-hmm. with a too strong yeah. uh, response but it's not just those uh, those uh, uh, autoimmune and cancer uh, Diseases, both of which share the uh, the characteristic of being chronic, lasting over long periods of time. Uh, you 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 ought, uh, another disease that, uh, shares that characteristic uh, is HIV/AIDS. Uh, although in this case, we're talking about an infectious uh, disease caused by a virus, clearly. Uh, but the progression to AIDS is a period of many years, many more years now that uh, that there are uh, drugs to reduce the uh, uh, the viral load uh, already, although it is not a still not a solution uh, to HIV. But the just understanding the even the basics there that uh, that the body's response to HIV provides uh, the virus with more targets since the, the, the target of, of HIV is CD4 T cells of the immune system. Uh, so again, that where to intervene in that, in that very complex set of feedback mechanisms. Uh, one, of the, uh, and one of the points that we made in, in, in talking about business strategy was in uh, in, in the MasterCard case, where we, we found that the that the most effective uh, solution to their business problem was not a single point intervention, but the need to be able to hit, in that case, four points. Well, if you imagine a a, a causal loop diagram of uh, all of the intricacies of the interrelationships. Uh, in uh, uh, the uh, immune response to HIV, uh, 30 years of research have gone into uh, hitting uh, one or two very narrow areas of targets. And so I've done this, you just take a, a, a big model of the entire a diagram of the big diagram of the model of the system and uh, and I can point with one finger to the area that the last 50, you know, whatever it is, 30 or 40 billion dollars of research has been focused on. Uh, not, it, it, it seems intuitive to me uh, and to I think a lot of people that, uh, that the intervention may need much more than a single magic bullet. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that the intervention in the system at multiple points uh, again, to enable the immune system to uh, respond more uh, effectively uh, in a somewhat different balance than it is uh, in the disease condition it makes a lot of sense. And I want to talk about just one more example because uh, I will leave to uh, those of you who choose to follow up on this to, uh, to learn about the, the kinds of dynamics that, uh, that are specifically at work, uh, at which I'm not an expert, I'm simply observing uh, what I think are some obvious cases. Uh, and that final example is in traumatic brain injury and, it's, it's, and the longer term consequence of chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, the uh, which of NFL fame with uh, mm-hmm. all the research in concussions, and not just the, the the big hits that cause concussions, but the the the, the subconcussive hits that accumulate. You know, we talked about death by a thousand cuts when we we're talking about project changes impacting costs. Well, you know, a thousand hits uh, or hundreds of hits, perhaps. Uh, on the football field or some other sporting activity may well indeed uh, trigger a set of dynamics in the brain that only show up many, many years later. Now, a, uh, 
I've done some preliminary modeling of this, and there's nothing to say that uh, I can't prove that it's right. Uh, but it is, uh, it is certainly correct that it's possible to replicate the performance of uh, a condition in the brain uh, in which uh, uh, cells called microglia, uh, whose role is to clean up damaged neurons in the brain, if, overreact, uh, if overacting a bit uh, and cleaning up not just precisely the damaged neurons, but a little bit of collateral damage along with it. And this is the suspicion of some scientists that that dynamic can, since the collateral damage triggers the production of even more, uh, the activation of even more microglia that do, then may do a little more collateral damage, the buildup of that process might well be a key uh, contributor to the decades-long phenomenon of the development of uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, interestingly, uh, I, I, I don't think coincidentally, uh, the, uh, there was an announcement earlier this year that uh, researchers at Harvard had identified what they called uh, rogue immune cells. Uh, and yes, those rogue immune cells were our microglia uh, that uh, appear to be instrumental in the development of Alzheimer's disease. Again, lay, setting aside the question of where does it all start? Uh, what genetics get it kicked off? What, what environmental characteristics may, get, may kick it off? But, Whatever starts it, there is a there is a set of dynamics that goes on in which it appears to me not proven that uh, the role of the body's own control mechanisms may actually contribute uh, to the progression of some of these uh, very damaging long-term conditions. I guess I, I just want to note that I, I, I believe that this is a, uh, a domain that's large enough for a lot of work to be done and certainly has to rank among the most valuable areas of contribution that, uh, that system dynamics can make. And I just call upon practice, practitioners of system dynamics uh, uh, who have the interest uh, and capability to identify and pursue opportunities to collaborate with uh, researchers to uh, apply system dynamics to human systems modeling. Ken Cooper, this is, um, is an amazing story of someone with your experience in corporate modeling um, branching out into medical dynamics. I know that you've done a lot of specific work that we've not been able to talk about here. So um, I'm going to leave you with the wish that you've got to get some of this stuff written down so that we can all have a chance to look at it and understand some of the really important work that you and others have started in this field. Well, thank you for the chance to be able to talk about it. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure.